Welcome to a screencast on freezing point depression and boiling point elevation. The objectives of this screencast are to describe the effect of the concentration of a non-volatile solute on the freezing point and boiling point of a solution, to explain the reasons for freezing point lowering and boiling point elevation, to perform calculations and solve problems involving freezing point depression and boiling point elevation, and to explain applications of these colligative properties. Now, if you've ever been in a place where they salt the roads to prevent them from icing up as badly in the winter, or have added antifreeze to the radiator of your car to prevent it from uh, freezing or overheating, then you have experienced the fact that if a non-volatile solute is added to a solvent, the resulting solution has a freezing point that's lower than the freezing point of the pure solvent. A non-volatile solute is one that does not uh, vaporize, does not turn into a gas, so if it is added to a solvent, it stays in solution. And when this happens, we have what's called freezing point depression. The solution has a lower freezing point than the pure solvent. And the freezing point depression equation or relationship is shown here where delta T sub F represents the difference in temperature between the freezing point temperature of the pure solvent and the freezing point temperature of the resulting solution. The M is the molality of the solution and note therefore that the difference in temperature, the amount of freezing point depression, is directly proportional to molality. So if we have a higher concentration solution, it has a larger freezing point depression. If we have a lower concentration solution, it has less of a freezing point depression. The K sub F is what's called the freezing point constant. The freezing point constant is a value that's constant for a particular solvent. It's not really dependent upon solute. Uh, these are numbers that can be determined by experiment and can also be found in tables. And then I is what's called the Van't Hoff factor. Uh, loosely speaking, it's the number uh, of particles you get when the solute dissolves in the solvent. And a little more on that uh, is coming up next. So this is the freezing point depression relationship or equation. Let's look at a couple examples of determining this Van't Hoff factor I, uh, which will help understand what it means. If our solute is glucose, C6H12O6, and we dissolve this in water, then the glucose is a molecular compound. The molecules, when they dissolve, stay intact. They don't break apart into pieces. So if we had, for example, three moles of uh, glucose molecules dissolved in a kilogram of water, a kilogram of uh, solvent, what ends up happening is each mole of glucose only makes one mole of particles. And because of that, we say the Van't Hoff factor I is equal to 1. Now, let's contrast that with a solution of sodium chloride in water. Sodium chloride is an ionic compound. When it dissolves in water, each sodium chloride breaks apart or separates into sodium ions and chloride ions. So if we had, let's say, three moles of sodium chloride in a kilogram of water, then we'd actually get six moles of particles because each mole of NaCl would make one mole of Na plus and one mole of Cl minus. And since we get two moles of particles per mole of solute in this case, the I for uh, NaCl is 2. Okay, let's do one more, and that's calcium chloride. Calcium chloride is also an ionic compound. When it dissolves in water, it dissociates into three ions. The calcium chloride makes a calcium 2 plus ion and two separate chloride minus one ions. And since calcium chloride, one mole of that, now makes three moles of particles, then we'd say the Van't Hoff factor I is equal to three for calcium chloride. Now let's take on a problem involving some calculations uh, dealing with freezing point depression. 
Roads are de-iced using different salts, including sodium chloride and calcium chloride. First part of the question, if we have 38.7 grams of calcium chloride added to 235 milliliters of water, how low a temperature is required to make the resulting solution freeze? And then the second part, which solution will have the lower freezing point, 0.5 molal NaCl or 0.5 molal calcium chloride? Well, let's take on part one first. If we add a non-volatile solute, calcium chloride is a non-volatile solute, to a solvent, water, we expect that the resulting solution will have a lower freezing point than pure water. Pure water freezes at zero degrees Celsius. The freezing point of the, the solution made here can be calculated using this freezing point depression equation. And the K sub F value is the freezing point uh, constant uh, uh, for water. That's a value we can look up. It turns out to be 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal. The molality of the solution is moles of solute, which is calcium chloride, divided by kilograms of solvent. The 38.7 grams of calcium chloride, fairly straightforward to determine how many moles that is. It turns out to be 0.349 moles. Uh, 235 milliliters of water is approximately 235 grams or 0.235 kilograms. And then as we saw very recently, calcium chloride dissociates into three pieces, so its Van Toff factor I is three. When we do the calculation, note that molality here is moles per kilogram, so molality will cancel the moles per kilogram, leaving degrees Celsius and we get 8.29 degrees Celsius for our calculation. Now note, this isn't the answer to the question, that this is the calculation showing how much the freezing point goes down, and so since water freezes at zero degrees Celsius, then the solution is going to freeze at 8.29 degrees lower than that, or negative 8.29 degrees Celsius, and until at least 8.29 degrees Celsius below zero is reached, this solution won't freeze. At 8.29 degrees Celsius and below, we would expect the solution to then uh, start forming a solid, start freezing. And the second part of this question, which solution will have the lower freezing point? To be able to determine this, we need to think again about the relationship between freezing point depression and concentration. And remember that the constant K sub F is a constant for the solvent. So since both of these solutions are aqueous, that number is going to be the same for both. The molality is 0.5 molal for both the NaCl and the CaCl2. So that's the same for both. But there's also the Van Hoff factor, uh, which takes into account dissociation. And so we need to consider what, essentially what's the effective concentration, which is both what's the nominal concentration, but also how many particles uh, form when the solution uh, is made in water. And for the 0.5 molal NaCl, the essentially effective concentration is going to be 0.5 molal times 2 because each NaCl makes two particles, as we just saw recently. So the effective solution concentration is one molal. And for CaCl2, it's again a nominal concentration of 0.5 molal, but each CaCl2 makes three particles. So we get an effective concentration of 1.5 molal. And if the molality is bigger, then the temperature change, the amount of freezing point depression will be bigger. And so the CaCl2 will have a bigger freezing point depression, therefore it's going to have a lower freezing point than the NaCl solution. Now it turns out that sort of the same thing happens when we add a non-volatile solute uh, to a solvent to the boiling point, except the boiling point of the solution is actually higher than the boiling point of the pure solvent. So for example, if you add some salt to water, 
that resulting saltwater solution actually boils at a higher temperature than the pure water will. The relationship between the amount of what's called boiling point elevation and solution concentration and other factors is shown here. Looks pretty much the same as the freezing point uh, depression equation. The delta T now is, however, a boiling point difference. It's the boiling difference in boiling point between the uh, boiling point of the solution and the boiling point of the pure solvent. M is molality, as before, so amount of uh, boiling point elevation is directly proportional to molality, higher molality, higher uh, or larger boiling point elevation, lower molality, less of a boiling point elevation. K sub B is a boiling point constant. Like the freezing point constant, it is a constant for a given solvent. Doesn't really depend upon the solute. And I is our now good friend, the Van't Hoff factor, uh, amount of dissociation or number of particles the solute dissociates into in solution. Okay, so let's take a look at a problem uh, involving these ideas. Type 1 airplane de-icing solution is a mixture of propylene, glycol, and water, and it boils at 107.8 degrees Celsius. And the question is, what's the concentration of propylene glycol in this de-icing solution? Well, how do we deal with this? How do we solve this problem? What we know is a relationship between the amount of boiling point elevation and some other factors, this equation which we recently uh, saw. What we'd like to find is the concentration of the propylene glycol in uh, this de-icing solution, and molality is a concentration. So solving for molality would be a good way to go about solv uh, solving or answering this problem. Well, given that equation, molality is going to equal delta T sub B divided by K sub B uh, and also divided by I, and delta T sub B we know what that is. We know the boiling point of the solution, and we know that water boils, pure water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. K sub B is a value we can look up, the boiling point constant for water, and then we can determine I if we recognize that propylene glycol is a molecular compound. The formula isn't given, but molecular compounds by and large don't dissociate into ions in aqueous solution, so we can uh, know what the value of I is. So we can plug in uh, values and see what we come up with. Delta T is 107.8 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of the solution, minus 100 degrees Celsius, the boiling point of pure water. K sub B is 0.512 degrees Celsius per molal. We look that value up. And because we have a molecular compound that doesn't dissociate into particles, uh, or separate more than one particle per molecule, I is equal to 1. The degrees Celsius will cancel when we do our calculation in terms of units, and 1 over 1 over molal will give us molality, and this works out to be 15 molal for the concentration of propylene glycol in this airplane de-icing solution. And one more thing to note, Freezing point depression and boiling point elevation are examples of what are called colligative properties. And colligative properties are ones that depend upon the concentrations of the dissolved solute particles, but don't depend on the identities of the solute particles. So notice in our analysis and calculations that we've just done, we take into account the molality, we take into account the Van't Hoff factor, the number of particles, that then allows us to get essentially an effective molality or effective concentration. But once we've done that, it doesn't really matter if we have an effective concentration uh, of sodium chloride or calcium chloride or ethylene glycol. If the effective concentrations are the same, the amount of freezing point depression or boiling point elevation are the same. So colligative properties depend on concentrations of solute, don't depend on identities of solute. And that is it for the freezing point depression and boiling point elevation screencast. Uh, this is the 
part one of colligative properties.